Okay, this is another update on the SAS Desert Raider Jeep. <clears throat> I have everything all torn down. I didn't take any photos of it in primer. You guys have all seen models prime before. But I'm using the Rust-Oleum, what they call rusty metal primer. It's actually just a self-etching red oxide. Works really good. I've been using it for a long time. And then I shot this with light khaki from Evercoat, which is a, sp a spray enamel I get from my local hardware store. Now the jerry cans and stuff are not permanently attached or are the uh, seats. You can see I've removed the pieces from the front there. Now I cut those with nippers and then I just left them like they are. I want them to look like they were taken off with a torch. So after everything's all done I'll dry brush a little rust in there and it should make them look pretty good. Now <clears throat> this is the motor. I just sprayed it flat black. Um, I was going to uh, see about losing it, but it turns out that you need that to mount the radiator and the uh, and the front grill, or excuse me, the front bumper. So this all mounts to the underneath the motor piece. So I'll leave that in. It's no big deal. I'll probably never be opening the uh, the hood anyway with all them cans on there. Now I also picked up two of these headdresses, which I've still got a long ways to go on learning how to fold them and stuff. I had to watch a YouTube video just to get any idea. And I'm thinking that what I might do is I might get it wet. I think if I get it wet it'll lay a lot better. And uh, if I can get it like I want it then maybe spray it with a little hairspray to hold everything in place. But uh, he still has to have his uniform changed. And there's his new uniform there on the floor. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to uh, to iron that and then put it on him and then put wrinkles where they're supposed to be. But anyway... I still have to take the tires off and paint those, but I did do the spare. Now this is just stuck on there for right now, nothing's been bolted back in place, but uh, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do about that hub that's on there. That, that hub is on the end of the axle, it shouldn't be there on the back of the Jeep like that, so I'm, I'm not sure, I might try to do something to fix that up a little bit. But I can tell you right now that those tires are a real pain to take apart. They, uh, they fight you every step of the way. But it's worth it because the masking tape isn't going to stick to this rubber. It'll be really difficult to effectively mask those. As you can see, nothing is glued down yet. It's just kind of set in here. It's just been kind of playing around. The crate is still masked off. And it, I know on the video, I think it's going to look a lot lighter than it really is. This is a, an actual khaki color. And then when everything's done, it'll get uh, painted with the whole thing. is going to get painted again. Everything will be repainted with this. Uh, Tester's Model Master Armor Sand. I'll shoot that through my Iwata airbrush. And I got like three bottles of that paint, which should be more than enough. I probably won't use more than two. Um... The dashboard is still masked off. All the instruments have been masked. I'll, uh, when I pull the masking tape, if, if necessary, I'll touch up around there by hand. One thing that's great about flat paint is that it touches up really easy. It blends together really well and doesn't really show any marks afterwards like gloss will. So anyway, that's it. The, uh, the SAS Desert Raider Jeep. In, in its first coat of light khaki. Now that's just a base coat, just for something for the armor sand to go over. And we've got the headgear for the guys. Um, looking at their weapons right now, i got a couple of Sten guns. I think I'm also going to throw a Thompson in there. And of course they'll both have 45 caliber pistols. I'm not sure what the British standard issue sidearm was or what the SAS guys used. But I know the U.S. sent, like, literally thousands of 1911 45s over there under the whole Lend-Lease program. So it's not at all beyond the realm of possibility that these guys would have been armed with American weaponry, like the 1911 and the Thompson 45 subgun. So if anybody knows for sure what the SAS soldiers carried for sidearms, if you want to leave me a comment, that would be great. I need all the information I can get on this. So... I'll get more done. This wasn't too bad for a weekend. Next is to start putting everything back together and uh, getting ready for the final airbrushing on there. There's still a lot of stuff that's got to go through the, the paint shop. Most of the jerry cans have been painted, but there's still a lot of other things that have to be painted. And 
uh, put in place. I still got to get out the uh, the tray from the dragon kit and see how that's going to mount on the um, on the Jeep here. I got to like repaint the tail lights afterwards and all that. So there's still a long, long ways to go. Um, I'll repaint the steering wheel probably in black, and the knobs on all the shift levers will get painted black, and the shift boots. Uh, but that'll all be done by hand. I'm debating whether or not I want to take the... They've got the pedals in the kit. It's got the gas, brake, and clutch pedals. I'm thinking I might put those in. I'll just have to wait and see how everything fits. Uh, if the driver's going to just cover them up anyway, then I probably won't bother. But there's still a lot of stuff to dig out of the kit and prep and get in place. And I'm looking at between the kit and the pictures I can find online, I'm finding a lot of things like the SAS Jeep. They did not remove the brackets for the uh, framework for the top. So the brackets are still on there even though everything else has been removed. It will get a jerry can mounted right here behind the fender on both sides. And of course the three Vickers machine guns and then all kind of stowage in the back. And I did find the uh, sound system. It's the same sound system that I used in the Q60 which is right here. The Q60 has got that sound system, and so does the CCKW. And this sound system has like 10 different soundtracks on it, but one of them sounds a lot like a four-cylinder Jeep motor, so that's the one that I'll be using. Still got to figure out where I'm going to hide everything in there. I'm thinking that right where the back seat used to be, I think that's a, enough space that I might be able to fit the unit in there. I'm going to do a little, next time I do an update, I'll show a little more on the sound system. I found that you can take it apart and save a lot of space and it's got a plug on it for the speaker so I should be able to plug in a couple of different speakers for testing see how they sound and all that of course we still got to get all the cushions back on the seats and get them all bolted in and there's still a lot to do on this but I think it's coming along pretty nicely so that's it for today and we'll see you next time